So what do you do when you see a patient who could have Fabry disease? When we think about Fabry disease, we think about the increased pain in the hands and feet. We think about fatigue. We think about recurrent gastrointestinal issues that may be alternating diarrhea, constipation, diarrhea, constipation. We think about decreased sweating, and we think about other issues like that. In women with Fabry disease, it's even complicated by the fact that women may have symptoms in one organ system and not in other. So you may have a woman who has excruciating pain in her hands and feet, but doesn't have gastrointestinal issues, or has gastrointestinal issues, but doesn't have anything wrong with her heart, or has kidney issues, but not heart issues. And really, again, this is just because the lysosome holds onto that enzyme in each individual cell. And there's been some great work out of University of Washington that shows from cell to cell, they rarely share their levels of enzyme. And so what I call the gunk or the lyso GB3 or the globotriacyl ceramide, which is the sphingolipids that build up, build up in every cell, and it may be next door to a cell that's doing fine. So women are complicated, particularly in Fabry disease. And the way that you address that is always looking at them as an individual person. You have to look at them from head to toe. You have to ask them questions subjectively about their symptoms, and you need to test them in the right way. When we look at women with Fabry disease, we know that they may have completely normal levels of alpha-lactosidase A when you do enzyme testing that's supposed to be diagnostic for Fabry disease. In order to find out if a woman has Fabry disease, you have to do the sequencing and deletion duplication genetic test. So this is molecular testing that you order from a genetic testing laboratory. And what they do is they're gonna read through every spelling word or base pair that makes up the gene. And from that, they can find out if there is a pathogenic variant in that gene. So when we look at this gene though, we know that many causes of Fabry disease, many pathogenic variants or mutations are family specific. So the laboratory is gonna tell you that this gene change is possibly pathogenic or maybe a variant of uncertain significance and say that more information is needed before you find out if this gene change causes Fabry disease or not. This is where sometimes it's useful to get your local genetic counselor or geneticist involved. Uh, when we think about testing, we like to think about tests that tell us yes, no, abnormal, not abnormal. But in the world of genetics, if you get an enzyme testing on a woman that says no Fabry disease, that doesn't mean she's unaffected by Fabry disease. You always have to do that molecular genetic test with sequencing and deletion duplication. And between the two methodologies of that test, you can find out if a woman has a pathogenic gene change or mutation causing Fabry disease.